Oh yes, yeah, so I'm a bit late to the party, but very happy today to show you the Oberheim OBX8. I wasn't in a hurry to get one, to be honest, because I've got the vintage OBXA and didn't know whether I really needed the new one plus the vintage one. But I bought the bullet and having bought it, I've got to say it's absolutely sublime. Every inch an Oberheim deserves its name to the point that I'm actually really seriously thinking about selling my OBXA, you know, because this is like half the price, can do everything the OBXA can do, plus a ton more stuff. Hopefully I'm not doing myself out of a deal <laughs> with the vintage one. Still worth a lot of money, the vintage ones. No, but seriously, this thing is absolutely beautiful. And I'm really chuffed for Tom Oberheim and his team to be able to bring this back, bring back the name of Oberheim and really nail it 100%. They really have. This video is brought to you, by the way, by Perfect Circuit. They're a US shop, but they ship worldwide and they do effects, synths, pro audio gear, recording gear loads of cool little curios in their shop so go and check them out also i've made a preset pack for this synth if you've already got the oberheim consider checking out my sounds the link is below uh, i think i'm going to do some sounds in a separate video so you can hear all the sounds i'll do a few here but mainly i want to show you around the synth i did a little a b with the obxa because i thought oh, i've got it here i should do that you know it's not normally my thing really but uh and and i think a b's have to be taken with a pinch of salt because it's when you use them in action where you really feel what a synth can do. But I got a sound from the original, put it in double mode and tried to copy it on this one. I didn't get the modulation 100% right, but this is what it sounds like. So you can hear the character of the Oberheim is 100% there. You know, I could have got it closer probably sound wise if I'd programmed a bit longer, but you can hear, you can hear, it's got the same sound. Okay, so let me show you around this little puppy. You've got two oscillators. Each one has a saw, a pulse, and a triangle and you can blend the saw and pulse together the thing about this synth is it's very distinctive this bright buzzy sound you can get out of it you can sync the frequency of oscillator 2 to 1 which means it will just change the frequency, not the actual pitch of the sound. And you can also automate the uh, pitch of frequency two by pressing frequency to envelope. Then the filter envelope will dictate the pitch of oscillator two. You've also got X mod on here, which uh, will make Oscillator 1 do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. It is usable if you can kind of be subtle with it. I tend to have it on a high frequency and then a little bit of that oscillator's volume. By the way, you can adjust the volume of the oscillators fully on the OBX8, something you can't do on my OBX8. Uh, so that's very handy. If I turn that down low. And we're mostly hearing oscillator two. We're just getting a bit of that X mod from one. So you can hear you can actually do musical stuff with it. Uh, let's take that off for a minute though. You can detune oscillator two against one. Just sounds like an Oberheim straight away. Uh, 
Uh, let's move along to the LFO section. As you can see, I'm using pulse width modulation here with the LFO. You can also modulate the volume. Filter. And oscillator one and or two. You've got a sign and a square and a sample and hold. When you're programming this synth, you will end up using page two a lot. Page two is here's this little screen. I've heard people complaining about the fact that there's a page two, but for me, it's fine. You know, it's not a problem. Uh, if I'm if I'm programming in this thing, I'm getting deep with it. It's just an extra page and you can scroll through it. It's not like you're going through millions and millions of pages and it's super complicated. It's really not. My only complaint is the size of the screen because <laughs> Being of a certain age, my eyesight is not 2020, and that screen is tiny, and that, that's the only thing that frustrates me personally. But I'm fine with having the page two. I like it, actually. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about the page two is you get a lot more options. For instance, with the LFO, for a start, you can choose between um, the OB8 LFO or the OBXA, and they're quite radically different. OB8, OBXA. So it just depends what effect you want to go for on any given patch. Uh, of probably more interest is the fact that you can delay uh, both of the LFOs. You can delay when they start and you can delay how they come in, you know, either abruptly or bit by bit. Let me show you that. So I've got a mod on both the oscillators at the moment. Let's delay that and delay the attack. I know it's not rocket science, but you know, compared to my OBXA, it's great, it's a revelation. Another cool thing is you can invert that envelope. In other words, it will start with the vibrato and that will go away. So that's cool. Another thing you can do, which I like, is you can invert oscillator one against two. So instead of them both going like that, one's going like that, you know, it's broader. You can do the same with this section here. Um, if we put pulse width modulation in, let's do the same so that it comes in with a delay. Sounds a bit abrupt, so let's soften the attack time. So those things create a lot of extra options, an awful lot. One more thing you've got here is you can make mod two affect the speed of the LFO. So if we have a delay on mod two, a fairly large one, and then we put this um, LFO to speed, it will speed up as it goes. Can you hear that? Uh, let's now uh, adjust the attack time so it's more gradual. There you go, you can hear it clearly there. Beautiful, it's beautiful. Let's just um, make that a little bit stereo because you can affect the stereo in here also. On the original OBs, uh, like on my OBXA, I think you have to open it up and there's pans and you can set where each of the voices is in the stereo field. Here, you can't um, do that manually, but you've got these automated options, which to be honest, are much less hassle. There's a few different options. You can also um, invert the phase of half of the voices. Which just adds a bit of richness again. It's all quite subtle stuff, it's great. I love it, it just sounds so good. Another cool feature in page two is the pedal release time. You can adjust it per voice, which is really cool. Say I have it on long. I can have it so that when I press the pedal, it gets a bit shorter. Uh, 
let's move on to the filters now. At the moment, I'm on a two-pole SEM filter, OBX. Sounds lovely. All the filters sound lovely. You can go over to the um, OBXA. Bit warmer, bit more deep sound. Uh, also, you've got the four pole um, option on the OBXA. Then you've got these cool SEM filters that were on the earlier models, not on the OBA or the OBX or OBXA. So this is two pole band pass. two-pole notch. Band pass. They sound lovely, they really do. And then when you automate these uh, with the LFO, sound lovely. Such a big sound. So you can see what you're getting there with the filters and all this flexibility is so much more than what I've got on my OBXA. <laughs> you know, I love my OBXA, don't get me wrong, but this just you know runs rings around it uh, versatility wise and what i can get the variety of sounds i can get out of it As on the uh, more recent sequential gear, you've got a vintage knob, which just throws things out of kilter the more vintage you go. It's quite subtle, which is good, I think. It's, it's fat enough anyway, to be honest. You can have it set to zero. It still sounds like an Oberheim. Uh, but it is quite nice to just be able to detune notes against each other a little bit, and the envelopes get more uh, random. <laughs> What you will notice about this synth is it's quite hard to make it sound bad. You know, it's not like some synths where you do have to really put in the work to get the special sounds out of it. It's one big sweet spot, really. Um, you know, you can go more deep and find some more interesting combinations of things, but it's not hard to sound, make it sound nice. Going over to LFO2, that's over in this section over here, you can add that to oscillator one or oscillator two. Um, and it's got some options as well, which is cool. You can have a triangle, square, saw up, sample and hold, saw down, or noise. And you can uh, put this modulation on either with aftertouch, another great feature of the new one, or using the paddle, you know, the mod wheel. And you can make them affect either both oscillator one and two, or either or. So obviously when you just select one, you get that extra layer of uh, modulation. I quite like using the noise with it as well. It's quite similar to the Prophet 5 where you can add noise uh, with the modulation and it just gives it this very interesting sound. It's a very similar sort of technique on here. You can hear it's giving you a little bit of dustiness in the sound. Quite warbly, but it's lovely. All in all, pretty beautiful. The pitch bend also can be um, applied to only oscillator two if you want, which is a great feature also. This also serves as the arpeggiator section. 
The other advantage over the OBXA for me is that you can switch keyboard tracking on for the LFO and also trigger. You can have it trigger so that every time you hit the note, it will hit the modulation at the same place. But let's show you the uh, keyboard tracking. <laughs> Other couple of things worthy of note is uh, the unison is great because you're not stuck with just eight voices unison as you are on the OBXA. Okay, that does sound great, but let's say we want a smaller sound. We can do that here. We can just have two voices or even just one, which sometimes I do want. You can have it as a normal mono synth, which is sometimes what you want. Um, also, Portmento has a lot of options. You've got the classic one. Which is a big feature of the Oberheim sound. travel around at different speeds. It's not quite as wonky as my original, I have to say. The original one is really all over the place and that's a, a bit of a special thing about it. But it's very similar, does the same kind of thing. You can also have exponential. Where it's the same, doesn't matter where you are, which is handy, definitely. Uh, equal time. And where it gets interesting is you can have this bend up, which is great. really usable and it goes from like an octave to like a semitone I think beautiful and you can go the other way as well so go from the top so nice and it does have that little bit of a slur where it all is not exactly at the same time, which a big part, I think, of the Oberheim sound is the fact that each voice has its own card and there's variables there. That seems to still exist on this modern version, which is why it really does nail the sound 100%. It's a real thing of beauty. I love it, you know, more than I, I expected to. I have to say, I, I love it more than I expected to. Um, Okay, so let me play you some of my sounds that I've made. If you've got one already, pick up my pack and you can get these sounds. I've put a lot of love into them. Hope you enjoy.